so when it comes to my personal favorite seasons for men's style, fall and spring definitely take the crown. Both seasons have that nice transitional blend between the hottest and the coldest parts of the year, which gives us a lot of options in terms of warming up or cooling down and how we can style and layer our outfits. So let's talk a bit more about the spring side of things and how you can start dressing better. And keep in mind that the men's fashion 101 videos on this channel are aimed more at guys who are on the beginner side of things and learning how to dress better. Now, as I mentioned previously, spring is a transitional period to where you're gonna have a variety of weather going on. Some days might rain or snow, depending on where you're at, while other days might be sunny and warm or humid out of nowhere. The weather can be unpredictable during the spring depending on where you live. So just like with fall, it's good to have outfits that are layered in a way to where you can remove or add pieces to easily warm up or cool down. So remember my layering tip from my last 101 video where I talked about how to dress for the winter, which is to layer from thinnest to thickest starting closest to your body. So in other words, you want your thinnest layer closest to your body, like a t-shirt, and your thickest layer to be your outermost layer, like a fleece jacket, for example. This will allow you to be able to take layers off and cool down if you need to, or add more and warm up. But anyway, when it comes to specific outerwear for the springtime, lighter weight jackets and fabrics are usually gonna be the play to offer you some adaptability. The thickness of your outerwear choices might vary a bit if you're in an area that is still really cold in the spring, which in that case, you'll need to adopt more of the outerwear options that I went over in my how to dress for winter video. But if you're in an area that has fluctuating temperatures and weather that is more typical of what we expect with spring, then options like hoodies, windbreakers, bombers, trucker jackets and fleece jackets are going to all be good casual choices. I think everyone loves the comfort of hoodies, so these can be a no brainer, but I like going for hoodies that are a little more interesting or have some nicer details than your usual hoodie. So for example, I like mixing in some streetwear or some patterns, as you can see, but most of my clothing tends to be more minimal. And I picked up a plain black hoodie from Banana Republic recently, but to make things just a little more interesting, it has a subtle piping design that adds some texture and depth to it to an otherwise plain hoodie. Fleece jackets and windbreakers are good options if you need something casual to throw on for a day that has a bit of wind chill or it's early in the day and still a bit cold outside. And trucker and bomber jackets remain a staple for me year round because of how easy they are to style and look good on most men. Now, another piece that isn't technically outerwear, but you can wear it as such is the casual long sleeve button up shirt or an overshirt. It's an easy effortless look that will look good on everyone while still giving you a little bit of insulation and layering for style points. Lastly, for something a bit more upscale, trench coats and unstructured jackets can be good choices and they can be worn in casual situations or scenarios that are a bit more formal. Trench coats are a versatile option that can be good for varying conditions like rain because they're usually water resistant to some degree and they have that classic timeless look to them. Now, unstructured jackets are jackets that don't have the heavy lining and padding that traditional blazers and sport coats do. So it makes them more comfortable and breathable for the springtime. They also tend to drape over the body in a more natural way and they have a more casual look to them because of that. These jackets can be a good option to give you a bit more of a polished look without being too bulky or too formal. Now, real quick, before I talk about bottoms and shoes, let's talk about color and fabric for a second. Now choosing color can be done in a variety of ways like considering what colors complement each other or personalizing your color choice by considering your natural contrast, your skin tone, and how colors work together in relation to your features. And that's something I go over in more detail in my Men's Fashion 101 course, which is down in the description below. But another way to choose color is by choosing color according to the season. And generally we associate darker colors with the colder months and lighter colors with the warmer months. The lighter colors tend to harmonize with the warmer temperatures a bit better, just like how darker colors tend to go more with the gloomy weather and colors outside during winter. There's obviously a bit of crossover here though, but it can serve as a decent rule of thumb when you're choosing color. So because of this, springtime is that introductory season that starts bringing back a wider color palette that mixes in pastels and lighter or muted shades of various colors, as well as patterns like floral and stripes. And when it comes to fabric, lighter fabrics like linen and seersucker start to become options again if you need more breathability or if you're in a warmer climate. Now, keeping the theme of lighter colors becoming more viable, this also makes light wash denim a more viable choice. Light wash denim is one of those things that just doesn't look quite right to me in the middle of winter when it's cold and dark out, but it makes more sense when things start to warm up again. Just be careful not to pick an obnoxious wash of denim and stick with something that's more subtle and gradual. Chinos or traveler pants in lighter tones are also a great choice or lightweight wool trousers if you need more polish to your outfit. Experimenting with different lengths and cuffs also starts to become more of an option as well, like showing some ankle with chinos and espadrilles 
drills, for example. But overall, lighter tones and fabrics tend to work well in the spring, and shorts may even be viable depending on where you're at in the world. When it comes to shoes, the usual suspects like leather low top sneakers and canvas sneakers are good classic options. But beyond those, lightweight sneakers like the New Balance 550s or sneakers with a more retro vibe to them can be a good option if you want something more relaxed and casual. But one thing to be aware of is that shoes like that are more dependent on trends rather than a timeless classic option like a low top leather sneaker. So they could be out of style in a few years, but I'm also sure that something similar will probably take their place eventually. On the more timeless side of things, suede loafers can be a cool option to mix things up if you want a more polished look. And shoes like espadrilles start to become more viable as the temperature warms up as well. Now one more casual option that I want to note that doesn't get talked about a lot is leather slip-ons. And Jason Statham is a guy that tends to be seen in these from time to time. These can be a nice switch up from the usual lace-up sneaker, so they could be a good option for you. With accessories, a lot of men's staples like watches, belts, and sunglasses remain pretty steady year-round, but in the warmer months, I do like to experiment with mixing things up with lighter materials and different designs to kind of reflect the lighter, airy feeling of the season. So for example, braided and weave belts can add a nice touch to an outfit that can really glue things together, or sometimes mixing things up with more casual laid-back sunglass styles like Wayfarers or acetate frames. Details like that can go a long way in adding an impressive finish to your outfit that is often overlooked by the average guy. And choosing the right accessories will depend on what looks good with your personal features, your skin tone, your personal style, but the general idea of having more laid back options as the weather warms up can be a good rule of thumb to experiment with. Oh, and another thing is that switching up fragrances should also be on your list, even though they aren't technically an accessory that you wear per se. Well, fragrances you do wear, but it's not a clothing item per se. Now, the thing is that scents that are more appropriate for winter and the colder months typically have a more intense smell. Whereas lighter scents that have a more breezy and fresh feeling to them tend to work better in the warmer and transitional months of the year. And it can be tough to describe scents through just words, but you're generally looking for scents that evoke a sense of freshness or cleanliness, like the scent of a cool ocean breeze or like a warm spring day. Fragrances like this will usually have citrus or herbal elements to them, and you generally want to consider your fragrances like you would your wardrobe and have different options for not only different seasons, but also different times of day. And remember, since the scent is lighter, the application should usually be lighter as well. You want people to discover the scent on you, not drench yourself to where everyone can't help but smell it. Now, if you're a beginner that wants a resource that can help you become more fashion savvy and learn how to dress better, then check out my men's fashion course in the description below. So instead of piecing together a bunch of YouTube videos and trying to figure things out, which can be really confusing, as I can attest to, it's a single resource that is designed in a way to educate you from a beginner level on how you can start building a timeless wardrobe to help maximize your attractiveness and boost your confidence. And you can check out more videos on this channel like this one right here and i will see you in the next one